All right, so now we're going to talk about the graphs of polynomials. And we're going to talk about them in factored form. Because in factored form, you can see, okay, x cubed, which you may have seen before. But it crosses at 0, because when you set y equal to 0, x has to equal 0. And we call this a triple root. So it does this little squiggly slowdown thing, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so if x plus 2, we know that that shifts it to the left 2, or that negative 2 is an x-intercept, because if you plug in negative 2, you get 0. And so here it does the little slowdown at negative 2, a little squiggly. Again, called a triple root, because x plus 2 is raised to the third power, making negative 2 a third root. This graph has an x-intercept at 3, again, because x minus 3 equals 0 and at negative 1. So most of you have gotten pretty good at noticing that they're always opposites. And so notice that the end behavior still works the same way, just like a positive line. Now this is 1 and 2, so 1, 2, 3 is the degree, just like on all of these. And so the degree is it's rising to the right. Now x plus 1 is squared, so negative 1 is what we call a double root. And so at negative 1, it's doing this little bounce thing. It's tangent to the x-axis. And going back up, this one's very similar, but it has a th at 3, it has the double root. So at 3, it's doing the bounce. And at negative 1, it's just crossing. So all those ones where it just crosses, those are what we call a single root. So x-intercepts, negative 1 and 3 again. One single, one double, two x-intercepts. So notice that this is degree 3 as well, but that this has a negative out front, and so that this comes from above and then goes below, just like a negative line. So remembering back to what we learned about end behavior. And I just want to start looking at the patterns, but so um, this gives us 0 and 3, and negative 2. So it's going to cross negative 2, 0, and 3. Negative 2 is a triple root, so it's that, doing that little slow down thing. And it's just crossing at 0 and crossing at 3. Um, on this one, negative 4, it's squared, so it's doing the bounce at negative 4. 1 is cubed, so it's doing a little slow down thing at 1. Negative 2 is just raised to the first power, so it's crossing. And actually, I should flip this one over because it's negative. And so this is 2, 5, 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 1 is 6. So that's why I know it's got to go down. It's going to bounce at the negative 4. It's going to cross at the 2. And then it's going to do a little slow down at the 1. So that's better. So things to keep in mind. We talked about single roots, double roots, and triple roots. Single roots is where it's just going to cross at. Crosses, nothing special. A double root is where it maybe comes up and touches and goes back down, or maybe it comes down and touches and goes back up. Tangent to the x. All right, and a triple root does a little slowdown, but still crosses. And so quadruple roots, this really has to do with the, the fact that it's an even power, and this is the fact that it's an odd power, and so here it doesn't change signs, here it does change signs. But no better way to do this than to actually look at what's going on. So these, some more examples. Notice that 0, negative 3, positive 2. Because x equals 0, x plus 3 equals 0, so you get negative 3, and x minus 2 equals 0. Because we're plugging in 0 for y. You get all of those. Notice the pattern. We're talking about degree. This one is 1, 2, 3. And so this one has the degree 3 and it's positive, leading coefficient positive and negative. And so it goes up and to the right. 
just like the basic line does. Negative 2, positive 1. Negative 2 is a triple root. And actually this should have a negative in front to make it go down. So correct that on your paper, that should have a negative. And then this one, a double root at 0. This is a double root. This is a triple root. And at 3, it's a triple root. And so at 3, it's doing the slowdown. At 0, it's doing the bounce, being tangent to the x-axis. So just what we did here, this is degree 1, 2, 3, 4. And so it's both are going the same direction, but negative because it opens down. And this one is degree 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And just imagine that you're multiplying it out. So how I do these. First I determine the degree of the function. And based on the degree, um, I determine its end behavior. Is it positive or is it negative? I look at what the zeros are. Are they single? Are they double? Are they triple? And then based on knowing where you start, graph it. So, 0, 3, and negative 4. 3 is being squared, and so that is a double root, and so it better bounce at that spot. So, th 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. And I said I did it first, but you have to do it at some point in time. So the degree, first off it's a positive because it's positive out front, but the degree is 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm counting this one twice because it's being squared. So it's degree 4 and it's positive. And so it should go up and to the left, up and to the right, just like your basic think parabolas, right? That's what we were thinking before. So it comes down from the top, crosses at negative 4, crosses at 0, and then does a little bounce at 3, because it's the double root. Let's try another. Negative 1, negative 3. This is a double root, and it's negative. So the degree is 1, 2, 3, and it's negative, so it behaves like an odd degree function that's negative, so just like your regular line. So at negative 1, it should do the bounce. So it's going to come down, it's going to do a bounce at negative 1, and then continue on down. Next one, 5 and negative 2. 5 is special because it's being raised to the third power, so it's a triple root. The degree here is 1, 2, 3, 4. 3 of those, 1 of those, so it's degree 4. And it's got a positive out front. So degree 4 behaves like your regular parabola. So you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and negative 2. So it comes down, crosses at 5, and it's going to go down a long ways. I'm not too concerned with where it's going down to. More so what I'm concerned with is where is it crossing and how is it crossing. It's doing a little slow down thing here. So what I usually do is I try to aim like as if it's crossing before and then take the turn. Triple root. All right, let's try another set. So negative 2 and positive 4. Again, where we're getting these from is that we're setting x plus 2 equal to 0, and then subtract 2, you get negative 2. Negative 2, positive 1, 2, 3, 4, and the negative. So this degree is, sorry, this is a triple double root and a triple root. Degree 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it's a negative, and so it behaves like a negative line. Lines with negative slope look like this. So it comes down, and at negative 2 it's a double root, so it's got a bounce. 
and then at five it's a triple root so it's going to do the little slowdown try to cross before and then cross after i draw these i double check that i did what i meant to do so it's got degree five so it's going opposite directions i started and ended where i wanted to um, four has a triple root and negative two has a double root it's doing what i want to because after I pick out the x-intercepts, it's really easy to not do what you mean to do. So at 0 it's a double root, and at 5 it's a double root. Degree 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But it's a positive, so it's going to be like a positive line. It's odd degree function basic odd function. So it's going to come from from the bottom a double root at zero. So it's going to bounce at zero and it's going to bounce at five. Again I went up a little higher here because there's more space in between it. Actuality these are going to grow a lot faster in between. Negative three positive 5 and it's degree 4 because 1, 2, 3, 4 if you multiply it out and it's a negative so it's going to behave like your negative even degree which is a parabola and so it's going to go down in both directions so this is a triple root, and so at negative 3, it's going to cross, but do the little slowdown thing. And there you have it. Let's try another. 